Welcome to Two Fun and Books. My name is Janelle and this is a book haul. I placed an order at Book Depository and it has arrived in the mail and I'm so excited to show you guys what I got. I am just super, super excited about this. Death of Jezebel by Christiana Brand. I really enjoy Christiana Brand and um, my good friend James um, has is also a huge fan of of uh, Christiana Brand and he keeps telling me to read this one but it has been out of print for years but British Library Crime Classics has brought it back and I am super excited she wrote this in originally in 1949 the Times Literary Supplement in 1949 said this a very neat version of the sealed room mystery provides Miss Brand with excellent opportunities to indulge her sense of character and her pleasantly malicious wit as well as her gift for posing an ingenious problem I'm super super excited about that I also got the other two books in the series by James Anderson he wrote the affair of the mutilated mink coat and he wrote this in the 80s and it is set in the 1930s it is very golden age style mystery it was just fun and lighthearted and he didn't take himself too seriously and I loved it so much but I could not find the other two books in the series until I looked on book depository and realize that they're they've reissued them and so I am so excited the first one is called the affair of the bloodstained egg cozy by James Anderson and this was initially published in 1975 the theft of the diamond necklace and the antique pistols might all be explained but the body in the lake is particularly puzzling don't expect me to solve anything, Inspector Wilkins announces modestly when he arrives to sort out the unpleasantness. And at the gathering that includes English aristocracy, foreign agents in disguise, a ravishing baroness, a daring jewel thief, a Texas millionaire, and of course the redoubtable butler, it will take some intricate sleuthing to uncover who killed whom and why. For whodunit fans who prefer their villains to be nice, refined people, the sort who quote Shakespeare and knock off their nearest and dearest between rubbers of bridge, the affair of the bloodstained egg cozy is a delectable treat. So I'm so excited to get that. And then the third one is the affair of the 39 cufflinks. And I have to say, I am also a big fan of these new additions. These, these are really nice. So this one was written in 19 oh 2003 isn't that interesting because i'm pretty sure that the affair of the mutilated mink coat is like mid to late in 80s and the first one was 75 so yeah he really took his time in between with these um yeah uh i love it <clears throat> Lord Burford had some serious misgivings about hosting yet another house party at Alderley. After all, the previous two could at best be described as disastrous. But with family members traveling down for the funeral of an elderly relative, the Earl really had no choice but to offer accommodation. It did not take long for things to go wrong even before a body was found. <laughs> Isn't that great? Okay, and I got the second in the John Shakespeare series by Rory Clemens. This is Revenger. I have a number of books now from this series, but I didn't have the second one and I want to read them in order. So I was very excited for this. This is set in Elizabethan England. John Shakespeare is an intelligentsier. And um, <clears throat> in this one, uh, 1592, England and Spain are at war, yet an e even greater threat lies closer to home okay I got a couple more and I think that these are actually the last two that I need to have the, the whole of this series this is Peter Lovesy's Sergeant Crib series which is set in the Victorian time period I got waxwork and invitation to a dynamite party waxwork is London 1888 
Though Miriam Cromer has confessed to the murder of her husband's assistant, she is still confident of her acquittal. However, the jury sentenced her to hang. Ooh. And <clears throat> this one is earlier in the series because this is 1884. London is being terrorized by a series of bomb blasts, even within Great Scotland Yard. Reluctantly, Sergeant Cribb attends a course in the science of infernal machines in a bid to gain expert knowledge of explosives and beat the criminals at their own game. This is a series that Peter Lovesy wrote in the 70s. <clears throat> yeah, this one is 1974, and wax work is 78. Okay, and then I got a couple of <clears throat> non-fictions that I'm very excited about. This is Misjudged Murderesses, Female Injustice in Victorian Britain by Stephen Jacoby. A forensic examination of the trials of eight women who were sentenced to death for murders they did not commit. Five of them, Priscilla Bickadike, Mary Ball, Mary Leffy, Lizzie Pearson and Arsenic Sally, Sarah Chesham, were hanged. The other three, Anne Merritt, Sarah Barber, and Florence Maybrick, were reprieved. This book explores how journalism created the myth of the notorious Boston and Essex poison rings and highlights common factors in poisoning cases that led to these miscarriages of justice, shining a light on a flawed misogynist and class-based, class-biased legal system. So that just sounds really interesting. And then <clears throat> Fatal Evidence, Professor Alfred Swain Taylor and the Dawn of Forensic Science by Helen Barrell. I'm very excited about this. It's the first full length book about the life and work of Alfred Swain Taylor. It reveals how Taylor was the, on the forefront of 19th century forensic science, details Taylor's well-known and obscure cases, his successes and his controversies, explores the breadth of Taylor's interests from crime to public health, from geology to photography, and researches Taylor's family history and home life, the private man behind the public persona. One thing that caught my interest here is that there was mention of the fact that he um, knew Charles Dickens and Wilkie Collins. So that piqued my interest. He gave Charles Dickens a tour of his laboratory and Wilkie Collins owned copies of his books. His work was known to Sir Arthur Conan Doyle and he inspired the creation of fictional forensic detective Dr. Thorndike, who is, that's a classic detective in golden age fiction. And for Dorothy L. Sayers, Taylor's books were the back door to death. So yeah, I'm super, super excited about that. So there you have it. That is my book haul from Book Depository. Let me know if you've read any of these books, if you are, um, and if you have, what you thought of them, um, because I am, I am just super excited about all of these books. And I will see you for another video soon. Bye.